Hi, my name is Sharon Chen, and this video is about classic childhood rashes that resemble measles. The learning objectives are to explain the difference between exanthems and enanthems, to identify and describe the classical childhood exanthems and their etiologies, and to recognize important immunologically mediated rash and fever syndromes that mimic viral childhood exanthems. The title of this video has the word exanthems and enanthems. So what are these? Exanthems are skin rashes, and enanthems are lesions of mucosal surfaces. Exanthem means to blossom in Greek. The word refers to the abruptness of the rash appearance, which affects multiple parts of the body. Exanthems typically refer to rashes seen in childhood. There's another word commonly used to describe these exanthems. This is morbilliform, which describes a nonspecific macular papular eruption that looks like measles. You can see an example of a morbilliform rash in the image. The major childhood exanthems were classified in the early 1900s as first disease, second disease, etc., to sixth disease, as you can see in the table. Measles was first disease, and the other exanthems were distinguished as separate diseases compared to measles. Over time, fourth disease has been dropped. There have been theories that it was a combination of some of the other diseases. At the time, the causative agent was not known for any of these diseases, but as you can see, we now know the etiologies. Names for these exanthems can be quite confusing because you will find different physicians using different terms. I've listed some of the more common names in the table. Exanthems are a result of virus infections, as we will detail later, but they can also be a result of bacterial toxins, of immune responses, of autoimmunity, and even a result of allergic reactions. When people were describing exanthems, they noticed lesions in the mouth and called these enanthems. This means to blossom inside in Greek. Enanthems represent sudden eruptions of lesions on mucous membranes. Some of the classic exanthems have associated enanthems, for example, coplic spots associated with measles. The arrow points to the whitish lesions on the buccal mucosa. Now for the next several slides, I will give you some details of each of the classic childhood exanthems. As I said before, first disease is measles. Here's a face of a child with measles. You can see the macules and papules. Measles exanthem has a characteristic pattern of appearance and spread. The exanthem starts on the forehead at the hairline and behind the ears, and then spreads to the entire face, then downward to the trunk and extremities. The spread occurs over several days with coalescing of the rash or grouping uh, of the rash, predominantly on the face and other regions. You can see an example of this uh, on the thighs of this child. The enanthem, called coplic spots, erupt before the exanthem is noticeable and quickly sloughs as the exanthem spreads. Second disease is now more commonly referred to as scarlet fever, which is caused by Streptococcus pyogenes strains that produce pyrogenic exotoxin A. The exanthem is distinguished by a diffuse erythema over the cheeks with pallor around the mouth, which is called circumoral pallor. On exam, the rash feels like sandpaper, which is different from the measles exanthem. It feels like sandpaper because of the fine erythemous papules that feel rough like goose pimples and blanch with pressure. The rash starts at the neck and then spreads to the trunk and extremity, similar to measles. But the rash is accentuated at the inner creases of the elbows, axilla, and groin areas. As the rash resolves, desquamation occurs. Scarlet fever also has an associated enanthem called strawberry tongue. The tongue looks like a strawberry because of the redness of the tongue from desquamation, with prominent swollen papillae sticking out, resembling the strawberry seeds. Early in infection, the tongue may have a white coating, as you can see in the picture. Like measles, scarlet fever can be associated with pharyngitis, but in contrast, scarlet fever has no cough, coryza, or conjunctivitis. Diagnosis of scarlet fever can be done by detecting streptococcus pyogenes from throat culture. The next disease is third disease, otherwise known as rubella. It has other names, as you can read. Rubella is caused by rubella virus and the toga virus family. It's enveloped with an RNA genome. The exanthem of rubella look like pink, red macules and papules that starts on the face and then spreads to the trunk and extremities, much like measles. However, in contrast to measles, rubella spreads much faster, over about a 24-hour period. Rubella can also have an associated enanthem called Forsheimer spots, which are these petechial lesions on the palate, sometimes the uvula. You can see a picture of this on the slide. The clinical characteristics of rubella are similar to the prodrome symptoms of measles. In contrast to measles, the symptoms last for a shorter time before the exanthem erupts. Importantly, up to 20% of people are asymptomatic but can still spread the virus. 
Rubella is dangerous to the fetus. Congenital rubella is associated with severe defects, including deafness, cataracts, mental retardation, and heart malformations. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we had a vaccine to prevent congenital rubella? Well, there is one. Rubella infection and congenital rubella are not seen very often in the U.S. because an infective vaccine is used. Fist disease is next. Of all the classic exanthems, you are more likely to hear me and other physicians use the term fist disease as opposed to saying third disease for rubella. Fifth disease is called by, caused by parvovirus B19. Parvovirus is a small, non-enveloped virus with DNA genome. It has tropism for erythrocyte precursors that can sometimes lead to very significant anemia. The exanthem is significant for very bright red cheeks. You might hear people refer to this as slap cheek. As the rash on the cheek fades, a lacy or reticulated rash appears on the trunk and extremities. In adolescents and adults, there's another rash pattern with papular and purpuric lesions along the extremities in the distribution of gloves and socks. In contrast to the other diseases, fifth disease has no associated enanthem. The clinical characteristics are indistinguishable from the other diseases, although in adults, arthralgias are often seen. Like rubella, asymptomatic infections can occur, but again, these people are infectious. Parvovirus can be severe in people with hemoglobinopathies like sickle cell because of the prolonged anemia. Like rubella, parvovirus infection can be dangerous to the fetus, causing death and hydrops fatalis, which is a result of severe fetal anemia. The last disease is six disease, which is also commonly called roseola. Roseola is caused by herpes virus, HHV6 and HHV7. The exanthem has a unique pattern in that it erupts suddenly after the fever resolves. The rash look like pink macules and papules that blanch, starting on the trunk and then spreading to the ne neck and extremities. It fades within hours and definitely by two days. There is an associated enanthem called Nagayama spots, which are red papules on the palate and uvula. The distinguishing clinical characteristic about roseola is its high fevers prior to the rash and potential febrile seizures. So here is a table that summarizes the classic childhood exanthems. Now there are non-infectious etiologies with rashes that can look like measles. An important one is allergy to drugs. Morbilliform rashes are the most common presentation for drug hypersensitivity reactions. So how would you distinguish these rashes from the childhood exanthems? Well, it's not so easy, but here are some characteristics. Drug allergy rashes are typically pruritic. You may see annular and urticarial lesions and not just the morbilliform pattern. Usually, there is no associated enanthem, although there are so, some forms of more severe allergic reactions that affect the mucosa, for example, Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Age is a distinguishing feature. Morbilliform rashes in adults are more likely to be due to drug allergies, whereas in children, it's more likely to be, likely to be due to viral infections. Eliciting a history of exposure to a drug can also help you distinguish. Of the drugs that cause allergies, antibiotics are the most common culprits, although NSAIDs and other drugs can also cause allergic reactions. One other non-infectious etiology that can mimic measles is Kawasaki's disease. This is a systemic inflammatory syndrome with vasculitis of medium-sized arteries. The causative etiology is unknown. I want you to be aware of this disease because if unrecognized and not managed, it may be complicated with coronary artery aneurysms and other severe cardiovascular sequelae. The diagnosis is made by excluding other diseases and must include the following. You will see that many of the clinical findings overlap with the signs and symptoms of the classic childhood exanthems. You can see a polymorphous rash over the trunk and groin area. You can see oral mucosal changes like these red swollen crack lips and a strawberry tongue. You can see conjunctivitis that is classically limbic sparing, which you can see in the pictures where the conjunctiva around the iris is spared. You can see edema and redness of the hands and feet, and you can have swollen lymph nodes in the neck. 